It's been about two weeks and a couple of days since the Sony A7 V was announced and like two days after the announcement we had the physical launch here in the Philippines. But of course something that a lot of us have been waiting for, especially me because I've been wanting to share this with you guys so that you can actually use it to decide on whether you want the A7 V or not. Well, Adobe finally released at least a beta version of Camera Raw that can open the raw files of the A7 V. Now, this video will of course be a quick demonstration of processing the raw files to check out a couple of things, mainly dynamic range and color, and in addition would be resolution because I've been getting a lot of questions from friends who shoot sports or wild birds uh, who want to see if they can use the 33 megapixel sensor and then have room to crop. So that's what we are going to be talking about in this. And yes, at the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download these raw files that I took so that you can test it out as well. So let's get right on it. We're opening Lightroom right now. And well, I've already pre-selected five raw files that I'm going to work on on this video so that we can test out what we want to see. Now, a bit of a bias, of course, I'm a landscape photographer. So the one of the first things I wanted to test out about this is if it does have more dynamic range than the a7 IV, which we will see now. So the first test shot that I actually did with this was before sunrise, just outside my balcony. I'm fortunate enough to have a view of the sunrise and this patch of cityscape right here. So this time was perfect to really test out the dynamic range. Well, at least a bit of the dynamic range. We have two more photos that we'll test out in this. But yes, this is going to be a backlit sunrise. So let's see what we can recover out of the foreground and at the same time what we can recover out of the highlights on the sky. So, so as I said, this is still a beta version. You can see that when you go to the profile module, you don't really have the usual creative look option. So still no FL, FL123, still no Vivid from Sony, and still no IN and Standard and whatever. So what you do have are the ones from Adobe, which we aren't even gonna check out because we want to stay true to what we have. So we're gonna keep it here on the default setting, which is beta. And Again, what we only want to see here is how much more detail can we get from the shadows and the highlights. So let me pull down the highlights right here and let me pull down the whites also. I don't think it's necessary, but yes. So it came from this all the way down to this and then we pull up the shadows and then we have that. So this was a handheld shot, a bit of fog in the morning and with testing these, technically we're maxing out the sliders, but this is of course not a tutorial. This is not how I would do it. This is not how I would process these images. But again, the goal is to see if it will give us more detail and it does seem like it. However, take note, this is of course a more subjective measure because, well, I don't have the fancy stuff to check out the dynamic range quantitatively. And so this is just out of observation. That is what we have. Let's try to pull up. No. Well, yeah, technically, let's try to pull up the exposure, see if there's more detail coming out. And then we go back again, pull it down, see if there's more detail we can get. And we are at negative 1.6. And I do think there are more details in the clouds that we got, but yes, anyway. Let's move on to the next thing, which is this photo. Now, this photo I took when I tried it out for birding. Again, I am not a wildlife photographer. I'm not a wild bird photographer. I do not have birding knowledge. Every, the only thing I brought here was the A7 V, the 200 to 600 millimeter, and my curiosity. And this is what we have. So this is it at 100% crop. And we got that just like this. And well, there's not much we want to see here. 
nothing when it comes to dynamic range but yeah if you do want to pull up some shadows and you can technically but that's not the point of this image now question is can you crop the 33 megapixel for a close-up of the bird i do think so now another thing I'd like to show is how it deals with color. Now even though I'm a landscape photographer, I'm not a fan of the color green because I've noticed that most cameras are rather... They, they get confused by the color green and the color yellow, especially because they are abundant in nature together. So yellow and green are very close to each other in terms of use, and that's why it gets pretty tricky with white balance. Now. One thing that is supposedly new with the a7 V, aside from everything I've talked about in the previous video, is what is called AI white balance. Now, I don't have the actual explanation of this, but my theory is that it's using subject recognition and scene recognition to be able to determine selectively the colors that would best be rendered for certain objects in certain parts of the frame, which means that your subject shouldn't be that much susceptible to casts anymore especially if there are abundant colors in the background so you can see here that well i do think that the subject here is pretty much spared from the colors that are being casted from everywhere else in the frame however this is of course a relatively i would say muted kind of scene because also we don't have that much sun during this shoot. But we can definitely see the stark contrast between the magentas and the greens of this scene, so I think that's something we should take note of. Now another bird image that I have is this, and this is probably where we have more comparison. You can see a lot of yellows on the bird. There is still a bit of that, uh, I would say, reflected cast color cast coming from the water but it is expected because it is naturally being reflected by the water it's a natural color being reflected by the water what's important is there is still that delineation between the yellows and the greens and again this might just be me it might not be the actual application of the ai white balance thing so so just take this with a grain of salt but yeah i do like the fact that the colors it doesn't seem like green is being too destructive even though it is abundant in the frame and what i would usually do is just separate them and pull the green to the cooler side and pull the yellows to the warmer side and you can see there is a lot of difference between the two and it doesn't really clash now this is another one of those photos that some of you might want to check out to see if it's croppable or not so yes so so of course the bird was pretty distant from where i was so that's how we crop it and this is how it is at 100 percent again the raw file you can test it out yourself if you do post it maybe you know give me some credit or at least tag me when you post the photos um I'd love to see how many people will be testing out these raw images. And yeah, now last two images, of course, I tested this out in the city. I wasn't able to test this out in natural landscapes because, well, we were cutting it pretty close to the launch date. However, I was able to test it out, I think, in the best location I could in terms of the dynamic range. Why? Because of this scene. Now, we have the sun about to set on the left and on the right is the cityscape of Rockwell, which during these months of November, December, January, and February, I think, have these very nice yellow lights. So what i want to see here is how much more can i pull out of the highlights so that our sky can be more balanced with a cityscape and then how much can we recover again from the foreground again this is not how i would process these images but we are testing it out for the sake of seeing how far we can pull it down so there we pulled the highlights all the way down the whites just a little bit now 
take note that this is technically this has more dynamic range than the previous shot which was the sunrise shot because the sun is technically still high up here so let's see if we can get a little bit more or are we going to crush the highlights and i think we already have crushed the highlights but that's totally fine this becomes less of a problem area especially since you can pull up the exposure and everything else so use the sliders pull up the shadows we do get a lot more when it comes to the details on the shadows right here but do expect some noise that came out well probably not not too much let's put it back we came from this all the way here and it actually isn't problematic for me so that's really good i wouldn't of course process it that way because this looks way too hdr for me probably halfway just to give more details here in the foreground but not really pull it all the way up now what else would i do well i would fix the colors on these lights right here because there are a lot of colors present in here i do want it to be more synchronous to the other colors in frame so i want to make the yellows warmer and then i would selectively pull up some of the details in this area to give it a little bit more pop and a little bit more emphasis but yes that is technically what we can do out of this single raw image let's move to the blue hour shot and see what we can do with this so when it comes to highlights i don't think we're gonna pull any further because this is actually this was exposed for the highlights what we do want to see is what we can get out of the shadows so again we don't want to push it all the way up to something like this though obviously you can but you don't want to overpower it you don't want to go too far this is actually good enough for me i would again selectively increase some parts because these can be like black holes in terms of the attention of the viewer i wouldn't go past 0.9 pull down some of the highlights because we want to compensate and this is even looking a little bit too hdr ish for me but yeah fine and then go back to the u slider for the yellows and pull it back just like that and there we go i mean that's how i would process it again i showed you already the extent of what you can do but if you really want to know how far you can push these images, then you can of course download it on the link that I will put on the bio of my Instagram. And well, while you're at it, give me a follow. Give me whatever. If you have questions, you can leave them on my videos or of course you can leave them down below in the comment section of this YouTube video. But yes, there we go. That's the raw support, at least the better raw support for the A7 V. So you can now test out these raw files that I will give you through the link. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I'm a landscape and architectural photographer who has been shooting a lot of different things recently. But yes, if you're into stuff like these, then do hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. In any case, Let's talk more about the A7 V real soon, but thanks for watching.